The Deshaun Watson commentary is getting totally out of hand. I'm going to tell you why I can't stand to take a look at any more of these cats on TV running their mouth about stuff that they're being biased about. We'll talk about that coming up on the next episode of The Barbershop. So, I, you know, you're going to notice a different tone with me right now. Usually I come on here, I'm level-headed, and, and um, you know, I come on here and present the facts, you know, do a little something and, and try to shed some light on what's going on with the situation with Deshaun Watson, man. And I had two videos out, and I wasn't going to even put another video out until uh, the Deshaun Watson verdict comes down. But I'm going to be honest with you, man. Um, I'm really starting to be pissed off. I'm really starting to I, I, I'm really starting to have it up to here with this commentary. And, and not only do I feel like I, I you know, I, I, I should speak to it just to make sure that people understand the opposite side. It's gone so far that it's actually starting to make me angry. And the reason it's making me angry is that is that people is coming with these little subtle jabs, this this subtle, the subtle little uh, uh, dog whistles that they're just throwing around, making it seem like, oh, we've never seen this before. And so I'm talking directly, and I want to get direct. I'm talking about Rich Eisen by name. Now, Rich, I'm a fan of Rich Eisen. I, I, I'm a fan of what he does, right? I like, to, I like how he does his show. I like how he, his flow is. And, and generally speaking, I like what his commentary is. But he is in left field when it comes to this Deshaun Watson situation. And he's crossing a lot of lines right now. And the lines that he's crossing right now is, here's the thing I, I don't play. I don't play, let's, let's attack a, one person's character, but yet and still somebody else, even though we know him or we might like him, you, you, you got roses and flowers and patting their backs. I'm not about to sit up here and let these dudes sit here and consistently tear down the character of black athletes. Because I'm going to just call it what it is. It's systematic tearing down. Because if you got one allegation sitting here with Deshaun Watson, but yet and still you talk about Robert Kraft like he's a deity. You talk about this man like he, he's the second coming of God. You act like you, he's above any reproach. And, well, I, I mean, I know what you guys are doing. I, I know what you're saying, but you know how many people, you know how many people, African-Americans have heard that same stupid line. Yeah, I know segregation is wrong, but. Yeah, I know Jim Crow is wrong, but. Yeah, I know you guys are, 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 are pulled over five, five times as, as other, other cultures, other, other races of people. I know that. I know your incarceration rates are three to four times higher than everybody else. I completely understand that, you know, you may be discriminated on in stores, followed around by plain code security. We get all that. But you know what? It's just the way it is. Don't be so mad about it. Be a good sport. Let us tear you down, destroy your character. And then, you know, as long as you come back groveling and you prove it to me individually, because you got to prove it to each individual person. Just want to pause for a brief bit here and uh, give a, a, a couple of cents about uh, what we're hearing from the Deshaun Watson um, disciplinary proceedings that's going on right now between the NFL and the Players Association and what's being reported, what's leaking out. I'm going to tell you what. We ain't got to prove nothing to you. And look, I, I understand the stance of zero games from the standpoint of they want to point out uh, the hypocrisy of the NFL's stance on disciplining owners and players. They want to do that. And it's time out for regular dudes, everyday citizens, acting like you guilty if you don't please every single person that's out here saying you guilty. And here his complete, utter lack of ability to rationally explain himself. I don't got to prove to Rich Eisen. And when I say rationally, I mean for somebody who's, in my case, just very eager to hear something understandably exculpatory from him about his own behavior. 
And I haven't heard anything remotely close to that. In his heart to make him feel great about Deshaun Watson's decision? If this comes up with zero games, there will be such a major hue and cry, including from this seat, zero games for Deshaun Watson's behavior. Because you already bias anyway. And then if he gets zero games and gets to play all games and make $46 million, what a horrible look for everyone, including every other player in the association that I understand is doing its job. Take a look what you say again with Robert Kraft. I, I know that's kind of a heavy thing to say in the morning, kind of like how much for a blowjob. No. <laughs> I didn't no. say it. I didn't say it. Look, I own the Patriots. How much for no. oral fun? No. Can you say oral fun? <laughs> and I got something for you, too. I got something for you. How much for a dry no. hump? Let's go back to crashing. <laughs> I need a scandal. This has to go viral. Do you think Pete is aware? Please watch crashing. Don't stand on that soapbox acting like you holier art thou. And you, listen, it's a thing called the internet, my man. Pete is unaware of my other job, right? He is you unaware. Would, he is would you unaware. care to tell Pete what my other uh, job is? So uh, you, are you aware of the NFL network, Pete? You don't think anything that you can and will say will not show up on the internet? It's too pricey. No. Oh, because of now appearance. you're bringing it up. I understand because he went to a lady of the morning. Why do we do we care? You people care, right? You know what? You guys don't care. Uh, I don't care. Here's my hot take. Go yes. to Nevada. But before we get to that, let me give you the context of what we're talking about and what got me so hot. Let's go to the tape. That's the hot take. The guy has a billion dollars. Prostitution is legal in Nevada. He, he didn't want to be groggy for his morning session of paid intercourse. Take the flight to where it's legal. Get a flyer on the street. Go, oh, is Bubbles available? <laughs> and then go to a nice suite. This guy, if he gets zero games... They'll upgrade you. You own the Patriots. See? Have some legal sex work done to you. Then fly to your important ball match. You know what? After a very important ball, ball match. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's not a good look for anybody. All you got to do is just read these depositions and read the details. The state attorney here in Palm Beach County upped the charges against Robert Kraft and the 24 other men swept up in this investigation to a first degree misdemeanor. If convicted on those charges, it carries a harsher penalty, including up to 100 hours of classes learning about the evils of human and sex trafficking, as well as up to a year in jail. In the players, I know you, if he if he don't get zero games, it also looks bad on you. But just think of the ramifications if what comes out of all of this is Watson loses no games this year and makes all of his forty six million dollars. You know how dumb that sounds. You know how stupid that sounds. So I just wanted to get that off my chest here. I understand that you got to protect him by law or I get it, but it's still a bad look on you as this process is going on. And again, I understand everybody's stances and what they're trying to do for future disciplinary hearings and also point out a hypocrisy. Why do we do we care? You people care, right? You know what? You guys don't care. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> Here's my hot take. Go yes. to Nevada. This is that type of condescending rhetoric that you encounter in everyday life in this country. But I, I, I think Watson is the wrong vessel to point out a hypocritical moment and also to try and stake a claim on this method of discipline. What a huge mistake that would be if it comes out with a big fat zero. You want him to be so guilty, so bad, that even a possibility of zero games, even a possibility of zero games, doesn't hurt your heart. You can't even think straight. Oh my God, zero games, it's, it's over. You know how I many times I, people done heard that type of language, that type of rhetoric? And as only one, one of the few African-Americans in this game, I am not going to sit here and let you systematically tear down every single black person that come up with something. 
Because if you cared anything about that, if you cared anything about allegations, you keep the same type of energy with Robert Kraft. But you don't. You're golfing buddies. They'll upgrade you. You own the Patriots. <laughs> Have some legal sex work done to you. Then fly to your important ball match. You know what? After a very important ball, ball match. Ball match. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, hey as, long, as long as I get my exclusives. Hey, I know you with the NFL Network. Pete is unaware of my other job, right? He is you unaware. Would, he is unaware. Would you try to tell Pete what my other uh, job is? So uh, you, are you aware of the NFL Network, Pete? I don't give a damn about no NFL Network. And we got people that's in the game that sit here and watch that and refuse to push back on it. Okay, Rich Eisen. I heard you a couple of weeks ago talking about only one. One is enough. One is bad enough. One is horrible. Well, where was that energy? Where was that doggone energy? When you had somebody on and y'all was kiki, ha ha laughing, chuckling it up for a whole 25 minutes about Robert Kraft in a sex trafficking ring. That's the hot take? The guy has a billion dollars. Prostitution is legal in Nevada. He, he didn't want to be groggy for his morning session of paid intercourse. Take the flight to where it's legal. Get a flyer on the street. Go, oh, is Bubbles available? <laughs> and then go to a nice suite. Oh, oh, yeah, it's a thing called the internet. It's a thing called the internet, my guy. You sitting up here laughing. How much for a dry <laughs> hump? Let's go back to crashing. <laughs> <laughs> I need a scandal. This has to go viral. Do you think Pete is aware? Please watch crashing. Keep laughing and joking. You See, this is why somebody got to point this out. Because these dudes be up here as, they're frauds. That fraudulent behavior is so corny. You sitting up here talking, sitting on your, your, your soapbox trying to play the moral high ground when you was just up here laughing about people that are victims. You just sat there and laughed for a whole 25 minutes. Ha ha ha. See, yeah, when you're, when you're owner, you ain't worried about that. Why do we, do we care? You people care, right? You know what? You guys don't care. Uh, I don't <laughs> care. Here's my hot take. Go yes. to Nevada. You know, right, right? We, Nobody about to sit up here and let you get that off. Every single day, we turn on that same television. Every single day, you turn it on. My point was then and is now, and sometimes, whether it's a tweet like this or what other people are saying, I'm not one of those guys that says, hey, if you don't like it, go to another country. I think that's stupid. And it's the same thing, but a different person. But just because you don't like the path that our country is on, just because you want to disrespect our country and still live and function and pay taxes in our country you're allowed to say these things that's actually what people have fought for for a couple of hundred years right it's the same stuff but a different situation so he doesn't have to leave the country i just think he's woefully misguided and yes i do think that the 61 million dollars has a lot to do with it here's why we live in a country where whether it's athletics or now in politics we have improved and continue to improve in the business world as well. You, you can't be blind to it. You just can't. Oh, Colin Kaepernick, I, hey, hey, if you only, if he only wasn't going to kneel, we'd, say, we'd accept him. If the idea that there's black oppression, then how, how in the heck have we gotten to this place where there are more black coaches than there used to be. There are more black quarterbacks. And the MVP of the NFL is a black quarterback, something that 25, 30 years ago, there was a, 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 a amount of wisdom, maybe not a prevailing wisdom, but amount of wisdom that could a black man be a quarterback with an intricate NFL system. That was actually uttered by people 25, 30, 35, 40 years ago. You can't even kneel. You can't do peaceful protests, right? Don't tell me, don't tell me it boils down to this. We have a biracial president with a black wife, two black attorney generals, a black secretary of the Homeland Security, along with a black national secretary advisor. It doesn't mean that the overwhelming majority of congressmen and women aren't white. They are. But considering the content, like to people who are, don't you understand that Muhammad Ali and Bill Russell, like, dude, that was during the Vietnam War we were we were still trying to figure out a lot of different stuff. It was a different time. That's why the industry looks like it does. That same good old boy stuff 
that's been going on for the last 40 years. A little bit more to crazy town. I am not, I am not going to stand up to show pride in a flag that oppresses black people and people of color. To me, this is bigger than football. It would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people that are getting paid, paid leave and getting away with murder. So he is not standing up because he believes that there are murderers that work for the police department. That's what he said. Okay, I, I want you all to make sure and understand he is providing context for his own protest. As I told you before, uh, he is doing something which is intentionally disrespectful and he has the right to do it. And I have the right to tell him that he is not only woefully misguided, but calling police officers murderers is even more offensive, does more harm than good. For the 12th night in a row, a coast to coast call to action. Waves of peaceful protest marched on bigger than ever before. No more silence. From Washington's newly named Black Lives Matter Plaza to San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. He is the symbol of it, right? I like he is the guy. We have people, you have police chiefs and police officers kneeling with people who are protesting, right, right. you know, to say, hey, look, we, we hear you. The kneeling is a tip of the cap to Colin Kaepernick to to w whether he wanted to or thought it would take off like this to start a movement. And then to see this has become a worldwide thing. It's the same stuff that permeates with Flores. You know how crazy this is? We sitting around here talking about a Rooney rule and you got coaches texting over top of your head talking about on accident, telling him, telling Flores, Hey, man, congratulations. You already got the job. Oops, wrong person. You meant to send that to another guy that was already had the job and in a back room that you shook and, and shook hands on and already had it sold out. It's time out for, for, for these black coaches going up in here on this dog and pony show. And you think you're going to appease us with, well, at least you got an interview. You wasted my time. And you wonder why Flores is in the office looking like he is. You've got coaches up here talking about how big somebody's lips is, Gruden. You see what I'm talking? You see what I'm talking about? We got guys every single year, every single year, coming out talking about this. We even have to, we even have to talk about the insensitivity that people have when somebody dies. Dwayne Haskins die. Schefter talking about, oh, he was a backup. Why would you even mention that in a tweet? You can't just say the man tragically lost his life. No, you can leave well enough alone. You got to keep putting dirt on people. You got to keep still tainting a man's character, still slandering a man's character, even after he died. And what was your recourse? He still got a job. What was his recourse? He still getting his check. And right now, I can't do it. I can't sit back and listen and watch this crap while people just sitting here just regurgitating these low-key bigoted conversations. And this might be a little too real for some, some people. This might be a little over your head a little bit, but I don't care. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to the people I need to talk to. This is unacceptable. These people on this TV every single day, and they got the nerve to tell you this. Well, I know it's, I know it's kind of, yeah, I, I know. I know you got a rough deal, but hey, what are you going to do about it? And they say that stuff because people like me that get into the game, and it's only a couple of us, you got a, you got a decision to make. Either you want to ruffle feathers or you want to tell the truth. And you know if you tell the truth, you're going to ruffle a lot of feathers. I, after I post this, I always liked you, G. Bush. But, I, I mean, you're just getting off in the deep end about the race stuff. I think you're just, you're just, listen, frankly, I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't. Because at the end of the day, if somebody told me, and they was talking about Chinese people, Japanese people, Asian people, I call right, right, wrong, wrong. At the end of the day, you cannot sit up here and tell me that you care about a shield, that you care about it, it, allegations, but you have the same exact case. The only thing that's different is a couple more million dollars in the, in the color of their skin. Let's keep it a uh, hundred 
And this is why I tell you about diversity. It matters. It's time out for, for, for you going in sports. It's time out that, that you, you don't hear no women on the radio. Zero. You don't see no women doing nothing. No shows, no nothing. It just ain't minorities. We talk about women too. It's time out that, that you got the same personality, the same background, the same old stale situation that they talk about every single day. And that's what we keep running against, running the same old hits, running the same old hits, same old resets, same old scripts. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm on Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, and if you check my resume, I keep the same energy over there. I'm the same when you see me in public. Because let me tell you this. You've been here this long. You'll understand this. If the NFL, now listen to what I'm saying to you. If the NFL would have suspended Robert Kraft, Daniel Snyder, or Jerry Jones when they had an opportunity to, I wouldn't be sitting here saying nothing about Deshaun Watson. You know why? Because all you want is equal treatment under the law. That's all you want as a human being. That's what people fight for in this country. Equal treatment under the law. That's what we want. So if they go to Robert Kraft and say, oh, I know they dropped the case. I know the tape is there. They destroyed the tape and they said, you're good. But let's talk about what we're going to have to do to you as far as disciplinary actions. Dan Snyder, <laughs> I'm going to let you know something right now. You got a subpoena on your desk from Congress. You refuse to take it and you're in a boat somewhere off of the Mediterranean. If you don't get your tail off that boat and get up in front of them folks and talk, tell them what you heard or what you saw, we're going to put you in an indefinite suspension. I don't know nobody in the world. We talk about privilege all the time. What kind of privilege you got to just turn down a subpoena from, from Congress? We can't even get out of regular arrest warrants around here. Heck, I'm lucky I, I get out of a police altercation and, and, on a routine traffic violation or stop. And they give cats leeway to get on a boat and go to the Mediterranean Sea and drink lattes and, 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 and whatever the heck rich people drink. Mimosas, mint juleps. You over there drinking these mint juleps. And, and, and would you please, Mr. Snyder, would you please come in on your off time if you're not too busy? Tell me about that stuff. How many are reported on that? I want to know how many local people reported on that. Zero. How many local people donated whole shows every single day to Robert Kraft and whether or not he was getting suspended? None. Zero. But that's the double standard. People in this country live under two different circumstances. Why do we, do we care? You people care, right? You know what? You guys don't care. Uh, I don't <laughs> care. Here's my hot take. Go yes. to Nevada. But there needs to be more people that stand up and say enough of the, enough is enough. You can't you can't buy my integrity. You can't buy my my silence. And these dudes is making millions, millions of dollars in slander, because this type of crap that I just saw on that TV screen, on YouTube, is the same attitude that we've been dealing with forever. The rules are only to cater to you. Don't you, and, and, the, and the tone is, don't you forget it. You making the most money out of you than ever had playing a kid's game. Robert Kraft was born with that money. It's his birthright to have that money. But you, you lucky you sitting here today. You lucky you ain't where you supposed to be at. If this comes up with zero games, there will be such a major hue and cry, including from this seat. That's that attitude. But I, I, I think Watson is the wrong vessel to point out a hypocritical moment and also to try and stake a claim 
on this method of discipline. We lucky we let you. Or because you could have been over there with your friends dealing with the poverty. What a huge mistake that would be if it comes out with a big fat zero. That's why they always bring up the money. 230 million guaranteed. I can't believe it. 230 guaranteed. And then if he gets zero games and gets to play all games and make $46 million, what a horrible look. You wouldn't have said that if it was Aaron Rodgers. You wouldn't have said that if it was Tom Brady. You wouldn't have said that if it was Josh Allen. You wouldn't have said that if it was Ben Roethlisberger. Ain't nobody count them cash checks, but you still counting this check. He done changed the whole landscape. Every He messed it up for everybody. No, he messed it up for you. Because you know what you want to say. And we already on you. So with that being said, hit the like button and share it. If you want real talk, I gave you real talk. If you want to hear what's real in these streets, I'll tell you what's real. But until then, until cats start waking up and actually looking at the facts and actually stop regurgitating what these other dudes are saying, we're going to have this every week. We're going to have it every year because Loki is the same thing they did with Obel Beckham Jr. He's a cancer. He's a guy. He's a locker room guy. He can't do this. He can't do it. And guess where he went and did his thing? But them same folks talking about Baker did got, he got did wrong. Baker got, I'm tired of talking. I holler at y'all. Catch me again. Cause right when you going to see me log Facebook, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, because I'm going to tell you what, right when this, when, when this verdict drop, I'm telling you, we on them early.